So, we've bought this. Have a look in there. Oh, that's a treat, isn't it? So the new will design make big camera systems, big rigs. And these rigs are used for photogrammetry, volumetric, bullet time systems. We use them as special effects of movies. We take them to adverts, music videos, uh, big festivals, set them up so the public can play in them. But we've got, actually never had a place big enough to set them up and test them with. And we've worked with the councils, with local universities, with commercial property companies, trying to find a space big enough, and we just can't find one. So unless we have a million pound for a big warehouse, which we just, we just don't have that at all. So what we've done is we've found an old building, it's an old dilapidated derelict building, it's been used as a landfill for the last 20 years. We, we're going to scrape it off the face of the planet and we're going to build in it a film studio. That film studio will also have in it um, office space and sort of seating for other companies that want to be, work there, other media companies. We've got storage in there, we've got places for our own in-house workshops, um, just, to, just to basically bring everything together into one place. The purpose of this video is to show you our journey along creating that, that, those, this studio and showing you how much work there is to get rid of the old building. So yeah, here we go. So what we did is we bought this building here. It was the only way we could really outgrow where we were and move into something a bit more large, give us more, more chance of expandability. This is basically two properties. You've got next door here is a two-story building. This one is a three-story building. And on the back of it, we have a big garage on the back of it, which is, uh, which is basically destroyed. But it's a, it's a, a two-story, two and a half-story building on the back of it here. Center of the city of Sunderland. And we've got restaurants, bars, pubs, all the nightlife area, entertainment's over the side over here. And we've also got a travel lodge hotel. We've got a big multi-story car park beside it. We've got Nando's, we've got a um, cinema complex. We've got everything over there. And about five minutes walk that direction over there, we have the city center itself, which is all the shopping center and the high street. And about five minutes walk that way is a train station. Maybe five, maybe about four minutes. And we've also got that direction over there, we've got the big bus station, big interchange system, which goes with the metro system and goes around the Northeast. So, as a location, it's amazing. I don't know if you can hear me over an aeroplane, it's flying over the top of us. Don't usually have aeroplanes, but today we do. So, you can also mention there's an airport near here as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the airport. <laughs> so, yeah, we do have an airport, which is actually on the metro line, which is only about sort of 40 minutes, 45 minutes away, I think. I'm not sure how far it is. So, the, um, so, yeah, so we basically have this, and we need to convert this into an empty hole completely. We need to take it all away. But what's happened, though, is over the last few years, is this bit of, like this wall was taken up by a previous tenant of some some point in the past and those gates were only been put on there recently you can see over there so there was actually straight access coming through straight into this point here and at that point you could just get straight off the street into here for the last like 15 20 years and what's happened is people have just literally just piled junk behind this wall here so this, this wall here is about three meters deep in shit basically <laughs> On Tuesday next week, we have about a thousand tires getting collected from here. So what we're going to do is between now and then, we're trying to kill a wasp nest that's based over there. And we have wasps buzzing around everywhere. We can't touch these tires because every time we touch them, they get a bit, a bit annoyed. So you're so, going to make them a bit more angry now? So yes, so we're going to basically squirt them with a sort of feather here, which is like a, a wasp form. And then what we'll do is we'll leave them for a couple of hours and come back again and maybe just give them another quick little blast. And see how it goes. Right, you ready? Okay. So this could be a very, very quick video. And there's the foam going. They're all coming out.
quid a tire on the quid fifty. Is that what it is? Quid twenty plus thirty. Quid for, quid forty. Get rid of it. We're getting a thousand tires connected to this, and um, out of the same. Um, on this building, the first building. We've left the wasp nests over the weekend. There's still some buzzing around, so we're just going to work around them for now. And we'll come back later and see how we've progressed. cleared so right, let's see if we can let me see if we can show you it so we've got from basically there used to go up right up to the ceiling right over here and all the way down over here up to the ceiling here down down this door here it was full of tires and now what we've got is oh, let's get this out of the way and now we've got piles and piles and piles of tires And um, I've also got on this side over here, all these tires here, and it's like two or three deep. So just waiting for the tire recycling company to come now, so pick these all up. There you go, 807 tyres later, a £1.44 each, that's how much it costs to get rid of them. There's an 18 tonne truck full of them, about to have a new lease of life somewhere. So now, what was completely full is near enough empty. I'm surprised actually, I thought it was between one, one and a half thousand tyres, but there's still a few more to go in there, but we just couldn't get them in the truck, so we're going to do another load with a smaller truck sometime in the few. We have a almost empty place. Minus what, five to ten skips worth of junk. So, all that is to go. And what we'll do is we'll take the tyres from there and carefully, neatly pile them over there. So then we've got basically space. And also, I can get in and out of the main and building now through that gap there, which we'll take out, fill up full of rubble bags, all the junk, and then we've got a way in and out of the building. Let's get out, let's get out, go, 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 go. That worked. That worked. <laughs> There's two on your back. But just to get out that little bit there, which was the which is the uh, with the doorway we took out, that was, a, that was a whole skip worth of junk out of there. And there's also, you've seen the tire place in there, it was, uh, it's just such a mess. So yeah, so we have a scale of a space, we've got basically from the front doors over there to the back doors over here, we've got about it's about 34 metres, which is about 110 foot. And from the si less, left side over here to the right side over there is about 14 metres, which is about 45 foot. So we can even park a truck right across sideways across it and get two or three of them right down the middle of it. And then basically we're going to have a seven metre bit of ceiling in the middle of here, which is going to be our main studio. There'll be a staircase, let's see if we spin this around. There'll be a staircase over this side over here, 
This garage is going to be remaining, but it won't be the original building. It'll be a different building, but the garage will be remaining here, so there'll be the same access in and off the, the road. And this will be our little new studio. And Tom. <laughs> so, there was a wasp nest over here. There was quite a big wasp nest over here. It was about a metre by a metre in size. It was quite a big fella. So what we did is, we, it was actually on top of all these tyres that were over here, and we took the whole tyre system down. We basically destroyed it on the floor. We sprayed it with a lot of stuff. We didn't want to kill it. In fairness, I, I don't want to kill animals. I'm quite a girly at that. I always catch spiders and put those out in the garden. But the wasps. Nobody likes wasps, and what work of wasps in an enclosed but environment? And what's actually en happened? Enclosed? Is that that's yeah. quite a bold statement there? En Enclosed-ish, enclosed-ish. But the um, but well, you have to give them persistence here. There's three wasps left, and they're guarding what's left of the honeycombs, or well, or whatever the little homes are called. The little, and they're still there trying to trying to do what they can. Looking after the little wasp nest. So yeah, so... I can't imagine them being very happy little wasps. So far, that's the only vermin we really found. We found one little mouse. One little mouse in all this. And we were told by a gardener that if you find mice, there's no rats. And actually we found no trace of rats, no droppings, no nothing. So there must be nothing from them to eat that's been pretty cool actually. I've been very, very pleased with that because I didn't want to see rats. I expect them to be rats the size of dogs, but there wasn't none, none at all yet. So over the last two or three days, what we've done is we've cleared all the floor down here. There's a massive big tarpaulin on the back over here that was probably on the roof that's come in with it at the same time. All of the felting that was on the roof's fallen down. We've basically got rid of that into skips. We've basically, what we've done is I've moved all the um, 20 litre uh, five gallon um, drums that were scattered all over the place. With, We've piled them up over in a corner over here, so they'll be easy to get rid of. There was quite a few other random tyres here and there and everywhere. We've piled, so I've, I've dumped them over here for now. But I've also got a, another pile of them starting up over there in a the corner, which is probably about 20 or 30 of them over there at the moment. And we've started making a little metal recycling area on the floor down here. But what we've done is, as I pulled away a big tarpaulin over in the corner over here, we found a lot of stuff that we don't actually know what it is. And, um, and I have a feeling it could be pretty bad. So what I've done is I've ordered in uh, a, a chemical suit that, that you're allowed to use when you're using class one asbestos. And we found a lot of stuff over here dug in about that could be pretty bad, hiding behind all this stuff here. And we don't quite know what it is yet. So let me get myself suited and booted in my little white outfit. And what we'll do is we'll have a look a bit more and uh, we've been on the phone to a asbestos chem uh, science lab and they've asked me to take a little sample the size of 50 pence piece and what we'll do is we'll basically put that into a little clippy bag and send it off to them and they can analyze it and hopefully about 24 hours 48 hours we'll know exactly what that is because at the moment i have no idea and then um, and there's a lot of it there's, i mean each pile there is about six to seven foot tall and there must be probably about 12 15 16 piles of the stuff i mean it really is a lot of material I guess the suspicious factor is why, why is it why here? Would be there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, why on earth would you ever have that hidden in the corner, covered in tarpaulins and covered in things, and behind this and behind the tyres? Somebody's obviously put it there purposely. Um, because at the moment, up to now, we've found nothing that was dodgy, apart from tyres, but tyres and wooden rubbish. We found nothing else, but that's obviously something that's not meant to be there. So, yeah, so. Give us, give us 10 minutes, I'm gonna get suited and booted, and then we'll, um, and I'll start touching it, because we haven't touched it yet, so I, I don't wanna to get too close. So we've been on the phone to a, an asbestos laboratory, which is in Newcastle, a, um, a full certified, genuine um, science lab. And what they're gonna do is we're gonna take a 50 pence piece size piece of the, the, the material, and we're gonna put it into this little airtight bag, which this respirator came in, and we're gonna send it off to them. We have to double bag it, and we have to actually take it there and drop it off, we can't put it through the post. And then what we'll do is we're going to go in there now and take a sample. So, and also Tom behind the camera is already suiting the boot in the same way.
Now this is it here. Right? I put in the sun. What was that? It's very light. I don't know what it is, but I think the ceiling tiles, I think. Just walk away from there. Now, when we spoke to them, apparently you only need to put a normal like COVID mask on. This is a bit over the top really, but to see, I totally really want to work with asbestos. So let's see what this is. We're going to send it off now, and we'll take it in tonight, drop it off, and hopefully within 24, 48 hours, we'll have a nice certificate saying it's not asbestos, because I really don't want it to be asbestos. There's a lot of it, and, um, and that's not really what I want to have. So yeah, so that's it. So see you in 24, 48 hours.